Blog Talk Radio. Stevie B's Media Production is a part of the Showcaster Network. The proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ by members of the Churches of Christ. With your host, Stevie R. Butler. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. You are my protector and you are my provider and my deliverer. There's no other help I know. You are my protector and you are my provider and my deliverer. presents what our word from the Lord radio show. I'm your host, Stevie R. Butler, and this radio show is being broadcast from Stevie B. Media Production at the Carolina Studio in the great state of North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, we are just grateful for the privilege to bring you a program where we as Christians and members of the Churches of Christ can share our faith and preach and teach 
the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ on a weekly basis. If you'd like to contact us while we're on the air this evening, just give us a call to the live show at 713 955 zero five zero eight or you can go to the blog talk radio website and listen to the live show there there are over 1900 live shows that are on the air right now at this very hour on blog talk radio and you will find this show on page number two this show has consistently been on the first few pages of that website now i just want to thank blog talk radio for that i don't know what the criteria is for them doing that but I'm just really grateful for that's happening. I can see God's hand all over this program. If you have any questions or comments for my co-host or any special guests on this radio show, just send your emails to my new email address, butlersteve1009 at yahoo.com. Or you can call Stevie B's Media Production at the Carolina Studio at 910-491-6405. Now, again... This program is brought to you by members of the Churches of Christ. And if you need any assistance to locate a congregation in your area, please feel free to contact us. Now, before we go into the program this evening, I would ask that you would bow with me in a word of prayer that we may thank God for this opportunity. Our most kind, gracious, loving Heavenly Father, the Father, Lord, and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to go through the various activities of the day. And placing it on our hearts that we are on this broadcast and we're prepared now to present a portion of your holy and divine word. Father, we pray that you will be with my co-host, Lou Gibber, and my special guest speaker, David Tillman, as they break into our listeners, the bread of life. And we also ask your special blessings upon our guest in the community corner, Kevin Boyd, as he serves our communities with his various talents and gifts to uplift our neighbors. We pray that you will bless them and their families that support their efforts as well. Father, we pray that you will be with Bless our listeners who are tuning in to this radio broadcast via Blog Talk Radio as well as through social media. We pray that they may listen well, that they may consider their eternal stance before you, and that their hearts may be pricked. And it will cause them to ask the question, what must I do to be saved? Father, we thank you so much for sending the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We're just so grateful for his precious sacrifice on Calvary's cross. For without such a sacrifice, we would not have a hope of eternal life. While even now, we ask you to forgive us for the transgressions of our own heart. We know our flesh is weak, and we often fall short of thy will. Father, we pray that you will continue to bless us, keep us, and love us all the days of our lives, and we have been faithful unto death. Father, we pray that you will save us. For it's in Christ's name we do ask it all. Amen. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. In the first segment, my special guest speaker is David Tillman. He serves as the evangelist with the Cottage Grove Church of Christ there in Rockford, Alabama. He'll be making this proclamation of the gospel of Christ. And in the community corner, my special guest is Kevin Boyd from High Point, North Carolina. We're looking forward to having Kevin on the broadcast to tell us what it is he's doing to serve in our communities. And to close out the show, my co-host, Lou Gilbert. He serves as the evangelist for the Overbrook Park Church of Christ there in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He'll be making this proclamation of the gospel of Christ to close out the show. So open up your Bibles and open your minds, and let's have a great show. After the break, the next voice will be that of my special guest speaker, David Tillman. Enjoy the show. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. Give your attention to the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, my special guest speaker, David Tillman. Thank you, Brother Butler. Thank you so much for this opportunity and for this uh, this, this platform that you have been blessed by the Almighty God to provide for the children of God all over this land and country. Really appreciate being here with you tonight and for the great work uh, that you're doing uh, through this media Uh, We just continue to thank God for you and for all that he's blessing your hands to do. Uh, Tonight, we want to look at a passage of scripture, very familiar passage of scripture, if you will. I just want to encourage a thought upon tonight from uh, Psalms 51 and verse number 10. That's Psalm 51 and verse number 10. The Bible says here, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. We want to look at this passage and just draw some applicational things that will help us as children of God understand the pain that David was in when he penned these words. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew 
a right spirit within me. If you will, I would like to admonish you from the subject, Lord, help me with me. Lord, help me with me. Nothing is more honorable and pleasing in the sight of God than for one of his children to openly acknowledge the fact that they have been wrong. As a matter of fact, Jesus himself said in Luke 15, 7, that there is more joy in heaven over one sinner that repents than over 99 just persons who have no need of repentance. In this, I can see that it is in God's favor for one who knows that he's not right, but he wants to get it right. God graciously and mercifully allows the sinner the time and the opportunity to realize that they're wrong. And then he provides them with a way to right the wrong, just so that they can be right with him. We can see through this that God is in favor of those who have messed up and are ready to fess up. God is in favor of those who know that they're lost and that they have need to be found. I know that's the case because Jesus says in Luke chapter 19 and verse Number 10, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. In Matthew chapter 9, verses 12 and 13, Jesus declares again that they that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. In other words, brothers and sisters, Jesus came to help people who don't have it together to get it together. Jesus came to help the misfits straighten up so that they can become a benefit. Jesus came to help the menaces become transformed through his mercy. Jesus came to help the problem makers become problem solvers. And one thing we understand about the power of Jesus that there's nobody he can't fix. There's no broken heart that he can't mend. There's no drunkard he can't deliver. There's no liar that he can't lift up. There's no fornicator that he cannot befriend. And there is no sinner that he cannot save. This is why we must ask the Lord humbly and sincerely, Lord, help me with me. Oftentimes we're always in the Lord to fix other people. There comes a time in your spiritual growth when you have to understand that perhaps you are the problem. And if the problem is going to be fixed, then you need some help with you. As we look at Psalms 51, we can actually see the brokenness of a penitent man who realizes just how far he's drifted from God. He realizes that he's no longer the man he once was and recognizes that he's no longer the man that wrote, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Sin has invaded David's territory and has caused him to want some things that have nothing to do with the Lord. His yielding to temptation has caused him to break three of God's Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not covet, for he did that with Bathsheba. Thou shalt not commit adultery, for he did that with Bathsheba. And thou shalt not murder He did that to Uriah. Yes, David broke all three commandments because he listened to his flesh rather than listening to his spirit. Now he comes before God in the brokenness of a penitent heart, asking God him with him. He says to God, Lord, something is wrong with my heart. I mean, I must have a bad heart to be able to take another man's wife into my bed and treat her as if she was mine. I must have a bad heart to be able to murder an innocent man just to cover up my own mishaps. Lord, something got to be wrong with my heart. I need you to create in me a clean heart, O God. Prior to David asking the Lord for a clean heart, in verses 3 and 4 of this blessed psalm, David says, For I acknowledge my transgressions, And my sin is ever before me. Against thee, the only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. David right here admits the fact that he had sinned. He didn't blame his transgressions on anyone 
but himself. He had transgressed. He had sinned. He had done the wrong. Now he needed the Lord to help him with him by creating something in him that he recognized that he did not have, which was a clean heart. Oh, my brothers and sisters, if only we could be like David. If only we could recognize that sometimes we are our own worst enemy. If only we could recognize that it's not mama's fault. If only we could recognize that it's not daddy's fault. If only we could recognize that it's not the church's fault and it's not the leader's fault. But the reason why I'm in the shape I'm in, the reason why my life is so messed up, the reason why I'm depressed, the reason why I'm miserable, the reason why I have no joy is because I've caused my own problems. If I'm honest with myself, I need to cry out with the Lord, to the Lord, Lord, I need some help with me. Well, let's look at some reasons why I need some help with me. First of all, because I've examined me, and I don't like what I see. Oh, I'll say that again. One of the reasons why I need some help with me is because I have examined me, and I don't like what I see. Biblically, brothers and sisters, the Bible encourages us to examine ourselves. We see Paul, the apostle, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 28, encouraging the children of God, let every man examine himself. Even in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse number 5, once more and again, Paul encourages the church at Corinth to examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. The thing with examining ourselves, brothers and sisters, that oftentimes we find out that we are not what we thought we were. More often than not, we discover that we may not be who we used to be. We are still a long way from where we ought to be. And this is what causes me to be displeased with me when I examine me. When I examine me, I discover that I wasn't better than I thought I was. When I examine me, I discover that I was not wiser than I thought I was. When I examine me, I discover that I wasn't further along down the road or in my spiritual maturity than I thought I was. When I examine me, I'm brought face to face with the reality of who I really am. And when I look at myself in comparison to the word of God, I don't like what I see. And so therefore I have to ask the Lord, Lord, help me with me. First of all, because I've examined me and I don't like what I see. Then secondly, I've expressed what's in me, but it's not enough to help me. The worst thing in the world that you could do, brothers and sisters, is try to fix yourself. Oh, many of us have tried. Many of us have failed. Many of us still hit what we call that proverbial brick wall, but yet we'll still try to fix ourselves, running here and running there trying to find solutions to problems that only God can fix, trying to find a way that only God can make, trying to find an outcome that only God can give. And when you've expressed what's in you and discovered that it's not enough to help you, you need to come to the Lord and ask for some help. We know that something is wrong with us, and it's not up to us to fix us. Man has been trying to do that since the beginning of time, which is why the prophet Jeremiah stood on the annals of time in Jeremiah chapter 10 and beginning at verse number 23 and said, O Lord, we know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his own steps. Even the wise man Solomon said in Proverbs chapter 16 and verse number 25 that there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And so we need to pay attention to what David said in Psalms 37 and verse number 23. When David penned these words, the of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Verse 24 says, though he fall, he shall not utterly be cast down, for the Lord will uphold him 
with his hand, or if I'm going to be fixed, I've got to go to somebody who can show enough fix me if I'm going to get better. I need to go to somebody who can help me become better. And David suggests in this very psalm that that's nobody but the Lord. The steps of a good man are ordered or ordained by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Oh, brothers and sisters, we're asking the Lord tonight, Lord, help me with me because I've examined me. I don't like what I see. I've expressed what's in me. And it's not enough to help me. And then finally, I try to escape me, but I keep running back into me. Sometimes when we can't deal with who we are, we're like the Pharisees that Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 23, verses 25 through 28. We're trying to pretend to be something that we are not. The reason why the Lord came down so hard on these hypocrites was because they were pretending to be right on the outside, but they were toe up from the flow up on the inside. And if we're going to be fixed, if we're going to get better, then we have to understand that if we're trying to fix us, we can't fix us by trying to escape us. What we must do is come to the Lord just as we are, humble and understanding the power that God has to make help us become what we need to become. If we would just come to Jesus, we would be like the man around the pool of Bethesda, who Jesus, after knowing that he was in that condition for a long time, told him, rise, take up his bed and walk. If we would just come to Jesus, we'd be like the man who was blind from earth when Jesus spit on the ground and made some clay and anointed the man's eyes and told him to go wash in the pool of Siloam, and the man came back seeing. If we would just come to Jesus, it didn't, doesn't matter how long our situation has been putrefied and petrified, but just like Lazarus, Jesus can call us back from the spiritual dead and tell the grave clothes to loose us and let us go. The power, brothers and sisters, is in Jesus, and so if you're going to get better, you need to get to Jesus. If you're going to get fixed, you need to get to Jesus. Pretending that you don't have a problem will never solve the problem. But Jesus is showing up a problem solver. He can take an adulterer and make them adorers. He can take contenders and make them consolers. He can take backstabbers and make them blessers. He can take those who want to do wrong and make them want to do right. He can take the fearful and make them faith walkers. He can make gossipers, gospel teachers. He can make haters into helpers, turn the inconsistent into those who are inseparable, take the jealous and make them justifiers, turn killers into keepers, take the lonely and show them that they're loved, take the malicious and make them merciful, take the nasty and make them nice, take the oppressors and make them open their arms, Take those who cause pain and make them give peace. Take the quarrelsome and make them quiet. Take the rude and make them repent. Take those who are singing songs of sorrow and give them songs of joy. Take the troubled and give them tranquility. Take the ugly and give them understanding. Take those who are walking in a valley and make it because Jesus can be anything, can do anything but fail. Oh, my friends, if you're struggling tonight, the answer is coming to Jesus. And as a matter of fact, that's exactly what Jesus said. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So if you've examined you and don't like what you see, if you've expressed what's in you and discovered that it's not enough to help you, if you try to escape you but keep running back into you, it's time, oh, it's past time for you to get to Jesus. Brothers and sisters, tonight, I hope and pray that this word has encouraged your soul. I hope and pray tonight that you'll find the strength that you need to get to Jesus so that you can be better than you've ever been before. Once again, Brother Butler, thank you so much for this time and for this opportunity. I'm going to turn it back over into your hands, and may God continue to bless your hands and the work that 
you're involved in. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. Listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. Is your congregation in need of lending for a building or expansion project? As your partner and advocate, Diversified Financial Network will take the time to understand your unique situation and develop a financing solution that meets your specific needs. 
It's an exciting time for your congregation. And what you need is a company with expertise in church financing early in the process. Call us today at 1-866-513-6665 or visit us at www.diversifiedfinancegroup.com. This is a program reminder. Stevie B's Media Production presents. We're airing live shows here on Blog Talk Radio. The number to the live show is 713-955-0508. The website is www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash gospel light radio show. On Tuesday evening from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'm hosting a live show, What a Word from the Lord radio show. Every second Tuesday of the month, we will have a guest speaker from the Brotherhood of the Churches of Christ who will be making their proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Also, during that live show, we'll have the Community Corner segment, and that segment is designed for small business owners and entrepreneurs who have products and services for our communities. Also, have four co hosts on this show Lou Gilbert, he's the evangelist for the Oak Brook Park Church of Christ there in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And Isa Mullins, he serves with the Church of Christ there in Cary, North Carolina. And on the third Tuesday of the month at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, my co-host Shauna Otis, she serves the Great Way Church of Christ there in Nashville, Tennessee. She has her team, the Mid-Tennessee Singles Ministry. And then every fourth Tuesday of the month at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, my co-host Kelly Fletcher, she serves with the Livingstone Church of Christ there in Indianapolis, Indiana, she has the Kelly Fletcher Show. And then on Thursday evening, each week from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'll be hosting a live show, the Gospel Light Radio Show. And there are eight co-hosts on this radio show who will be presenting lessons from the Word of God. And each week I have two co-hosts on the air with me. I'm also taking a question from my social media platform on Facebook that I'll be post- posing to one of my co-hosts on that live show. And then on Friday night from 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 to 10 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'll be hosting a live show, Stevie B. Acapella Gospel Music Blast. And on this show, I'm playing some of the world's greatest acapella gospel music artists, the sweet sounds of voices. And we're also interviewing artists. We're interviewing artists, producers, comedians, etc. And we're also debuting new music and featuring old music on that broadcast. And then every third Friday of the month, we have the Top 20 Countdown Show. That's the show that I'll be doing this Friday night. And we also have the on-demand episodes. There are a variety of musical platforms that you can listen to to get your favorite podcast from Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Apple iTunes, YouTube, etc. Just to name a few so you can listen to these previous episodes that we're producing here under Stevie B's Media Productions. Also, we have the recorded version shows. These shows are for album debuts mostly, and so the same playlist that was used from on the live show here on Blog Talk Radio. These can be, these shows can be heard only on iHeart Radio, on Deezer, and also on Amazon Music. Just search for Stevie B recorded version shows. We also want to thank all of our sponsors who are sponsoring these radio shows. If you'd like to become a sponsor, just contact my sponsorship manager, Michelle Marco from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Her telephone number is 954-687-4705. The three E's of Stevie B Media Production is, uh, it is the objective of this broadcast. We want to educate, we want to edify, we want to encourage you in a study of God's Word. And that will conclude our program announcements. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show you're listening to what a word from the lord radio show lord i want to be a servant giving all my praise to you giving all i have to please
am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you may bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Chosen one. What a word from the Lord radio show. I got a sure thing, a sure thing with my Lord. I said I got a 
got a sure thing with my Lord. With a God with a sure thing with my Lord. I've got a sure thing with my Lord. I don't know what the Lord is. thing with my Lord. That's why I've got a sure thing with my Lord. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. Give your attention to the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now my co-host, Lou Gilbert, and his subject, The God of Another Chance. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. The Bible still says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Listen, has God been good to you today? Has God blessed your life today? Has God brought you from perhaps a mighty, mighty long way? I know God has been good, and for that we ought to be eternally grateful, and we ought to say so even on tonight. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Wonderful. Again, I am just thrilled once again to be uh, to have been included on, on this program this, uh, this afternoon, this evening, and my uh, sincere thanks goes out to our illustrious host, uh, Brother Stevie, uh, our butler, Stevie B. We're so thankful for uh, the reach of his ministry all over the Internet, all over the world, really. And we're just so grateful that uh, uh, God has seen fit for us to come back on once again and to encourage uh, our listeners. And uh, we're just thankful for, again, this platform. The music is always beautiful. The guests are always uh, wonderful. And uh, we're just grateful. Again, I'm Brother Lou Gilbert from uh, the Overbrook Park Church of Christ in the city of Philadelphia. That's the city of brotherly love. And so we're just uh, grateful to be here. We come to you from 7630 Woodbine Avenue in the Overbrook Park section of Philadelphia. We certainly encourage you uh, to join us in our in-person worship. If you're in the Philadelphia area, every uh, Lord's Day Bible school begins at 930 and then worship at 11. And then uh, on Wednesday nights, we meet uh, via Zoom and Facebook. And so you can look us up on our Facebook account uh, if you so uh, desire or contact us for the Zoom information. And then we're at 7630 Woodbine Avenue in the city of Philadelphia. And again, I'm thankful to our host for extending us this opportunity. I want to take a look at the book of Jonah. Jonah chapter uh, 1. Jonah chapter 1. We'll just read a few verses of Jonah chapter 1. Most of us are familiar with the story of Jonah. If you have attended church anywhere uh, at some point uh, in a Bible school lesson or if you were fortunate to have grown up in the church uh, like I did or many others, you heard this story. This was a staple story in the church uh, on some Sunday school, Sunday school reviews, Sunday school uh, lessons uh, on the story of Jonah. There are even um, major productions uh, depicting the story of Jonah, either uh, from Hollywood uh, or local uh, talent and theater. Uh, you know something about Jonah, and uh, we say Jonah is just a story about a man in a big fish and how uh, he, he swallowed uh, Jonah. Uh, but I think it's about a little more uh, than that. Uh, and so I want to just kind of take a look at uh, Jonah chapter 1 uh, for just a, a moment. We're doing uh, a, a series at our a church, at our congregation uh, in the book of, of Jonah, and uh, just picking out uh, some things from each particular uh, chapter that uh, we find uh, helpful for us. In this, in this time that we are living in today. Jonah chapter number one, beginning at verse number one, the Bible says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish, from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence 
of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. The God of another chance. Sometimes we forget, and other times we neglect to see or ignore the fact that God is the God of another chance. Certainly, if you're listening to me tonight, you are a recipient of another chance by God. I'm not going to say a second chance because many of us are on much more than a second chance. Many of us are on our fifth chance or our sixth chance or, uh, praise God, our tenth chance. Y'all don't hear me now. Uh, And so we know that the very fact that you are living and you're able to listen to this broadcast lets me know that God has given you a number of chances because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And it is only by God's amazing grace and his marvelous mercy that he has not taken us out yet. He has allowed us uh, to stay here and breathe his air and drink his fresh uh, water wherever we might be. And so uh, we want you to know that, of course, God, you are a recipient of the, of the grace of, of God. But sometimes on earth, uh, we uh, operate on a sometimes a self-prescribed three-strike rule, you know, the rule that says if we mess up more than a few times, there's no hope for us. We place this rule on others, and sometimes we place this rule on ourselves. And when it falls apart, we run, we hide, we shy away from the responsibilities as if they will go away. This is often uh, due to a faulty or flawed teaching uh, or just an attitude of self-righteousness among us. Many feel that if one does not achieve perfection, that he or she is not worthy of our time or their time and and grace. And this brings upon deep feelings of, of distrust, of, uh, of anger, uh, of, of hopelessness, of distress among us. And so no Christian should have these feelings, uh, but for too many, it becomes a daily occurrence. Uh, but we have to understand and remember that I believe God, again, is a God of another chance. Uh, however, if there's anything that we should remember and be sure is, again, that God is a God of another chance. God, in his sovereignty, can turn any situation around. Somebody needs to hear that tonight. God can turn any situation around as long as there's breath in your body, as long as there's blood running through uh, your veins and you have an attitude of change, God can change things around. God can manifest his will despite our self-destruction action sometimes uh, and even by our self-proclaimed solutions to life's problems. God is able to send gentle winds our way that guide us in the direction regardless of our current situation. Uh, Many times we can't see at first what God is doing, and we may struggle with it, but then by God's grace, he allows us oftentimes to figure it out uh, before it's too late. Yes, I know that God is a God of another chance. Uh, As we look at this text uh, tonight, and if you were uh, with me on a weekly basis, I would say remember at least these three things as we go through this book. Number one, again, God is a God of another chance while you are living. Uh, God will uh, forgive sins when we repent, uh, and that's the overall story here in the book of Jonah. Uh, Jonah went to preach to the wicked city of Nineveh, and they repented, and God relented, and God did not destroy them at that time. God will forgive sins when we repent. And then, most importantly, God loves all people, and he wants all people to be saved. Of course, not all will be saved, but it's God's desire to save all, uh, and God can use those for his will. So the question may come, just how does God demonstrate that he is 
a God of another chance. Well, come with me again to the book of Jonah, chapter number two. Now, chapter one, in verse number two, the Bible says, God says, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. And then, so the Bible says that uh, God sent uh, Jonah to this wicked city. The first point, if you're taking notes, just take this down. Uh, when you're in a mess, God can send you a message. Did you get that? Even when you're in a mess, God can send you a message. Uh, if we could, again, an, another word, another way of, of entitling this message could be good news for bad people. A good news for bad people or good news for a bad generation. Well, again, if you know the story of Jonah, Jonah uh, preached a message of good news. Now, of course, you may say, how is it good news? Because he told them in 40 days, God will destroy this city. Well, what is the good news of that? The good news of that is God gave them the ability to change their mind to repent. And so even thus today, we have good news for a bad nation. We have good news for a bad generation. We have good news even for evil people who find themselves in a mess. Of course, Nineveh, the capital of Assyria, was a city that was in a mess. They were in a terrible mess because God, because their sin came up to God and it was a stench in God's nose. Uh, this uh, city, Nineveh, Nineveh, of course, Syria was a major power uh, in the Middle East at that time. Again, the capital was Nineveh. And uh, uh, the, the people were, they were enemies of God's people. They were a brutal people. They were a dishonest people. They were a cruel uh, people. Their cruelty was legendary. And as a matter of fact, it's interesting that God, God would use this, this very nation, the Assyrian nation, some 40 years from the time of, of the writing, uh, he would use them uh, to bring his people into captivity. So God was using this nation uh, to his, uh, for his will. But they were an enemy of God's people, and they were cruel to those they, they captured. But yet it was the will of God. They were in the mess of their sin. They had the wrath of God upon them, and it was God to these people God sent uh, the man of God, God sent the prophet uh, who uh, had a message of salvation. Let me tell you something this morning. There's no amount of mess that you can be in that God can't get you if he has a plan for your life. Uh, I never want anyone to believe that they are too far gone that God can't get them. God could use this nation, amen, uh, a wicked nation. God could say, I want them saved for God's reason, for his own reason. Of course, we could talk about Jonah. Jonah wanted to go the other way. But my point right now is the fact that God can bless you, even God can send you a message, rather, even though you are in a mess. You know, some of us have lived lives that are so far from being saved, uh, and when we became saved, folk wouldn't believe, and they don't believe that we're saved. But listen this afternoon, uh, God has a message of hope for you today. He has a message of love, a message of peace, a message of salvation for you today. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm sure somebody uh, finds themselves in a marriage mess. Someone might find themselves in a relationship mess, uh, one that's all messed up. Someone might find themselves in a financial mess or in an employment mess. But listen now, if God could extend his hand of mercy to these people, certainly God can extend his hand of mercy to you. As a matter of fact, God is a God of a second chance. How do I know? Just ask the Apostle Paul. Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 1, <clears throat> verses 12 through 13, he, he recounted his story about how God saved him, how he was the chief 
of sinners. In other words, he was the head of the class of the sinful. He was like a mad dog. He says again in Galatians chapter 1, verses 13 and 15, he said, For ye have heard of my former conversation in the time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. But he says, But when it pleased God, and God said again, Paul says again in First Timothy chapter number 1, verses 12 through 13, I was the chief of sinners, but God had grace. God had mercy on me. He certainly knew that God was a God of another chance. Uh, Peter lets us know in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9, that God is long-suffering. He is long-suffering. Did you hear what I said? He is long-suffering. He doesn't have a short fuse like we have. He doesn't decide real quick uh, to let us go. God is long-suffering toward us. He's not willing that any should perish. Even we see this uh, with the wickedness of Sodom and Gomorrah, another wicked place where God decided that the stench was just too terrible and God was going to destroy that city. But uh, well, he he uh, communicated with Abraham. Abraham communicated with him, and he, he begged God. He said, Lord, if you find just ten, will you save them? And God said, for the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. God extended his grace even to that wicked city. Of course, they did not, they could not find even one who was uh, honest in that city or righteous in that city, but God extended uh, them a chance. Uh, listen, my friends, whatever mess you're in, God can send you a message of hope and deliverance. That's the power of the gospel of Christ that can save anybody. For Paul declares, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and then also to the Greek. God can send you a message this morning, and God's messenger is talking to you right now and letting you know that it doesn't matter where you've been, doesn't matter who you've been with, doesn't matter what you classify yourself as right now. God can take that. God can use that. God can, by the power of the gospel, change and transform your life. That's what the glorious gospel is all about changing lives on this morning because we all have this evening. We all have been duped by the devil, the father of lies, who is a, was a liar from the beginning. So again, God can send you a message even in your mess. Not only that, but God, again, God, not only can God send you a message, God can correct your course. God can correct your course. Let's keep on reading here. The Bible says, of course, in chapter 1, verse 2, arise and go to Nineveh. That means get up immediately and go to the place, I'm telling you, that great city and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But the Bible says in verse 3, but Jonah rose up to flee. In other words, that means he got up immediately and flee, went the other direction. God said, get up immediately and go to Nineveh. But Jonah rose up. He got up immediately and went the other direction. He went to Tarshish from uh, the presence of the Lord. If I had time, I'd tell you, listen, you can't run from God. You can't run from the presence of God. David said in Psalm, I think 139, where, where can I go from your spirit? If I go to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, you are there too. You can't run from the presence of God. Listen, friends, God's got your number, and he's shown up knows where you live. You can't run from the presence of God. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish. He went to the furthest direction. He was trying to go of the farthest he could from the direction God sent him. God sent him west. He went east. And God sent him north. He went south, so to speak. And he went down, 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 down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it. If I had time, I tell you, when you leave God, when you leave your purpose, when you leave the purpose that God called you for, you go down. There's nowhere to go but down, you know. But I found that it's a lot easier to go down than to go up, uh, you know. Uh, I do a lot of running in the city of Philadelphia, and I run down the hills 
and the hills are easy to run down, but then they got to turn around and run back up, uh, you know. But listen now, if God tells you to go up, you've got to go up. Even though we might want to take the path of least, of least resistance and go down, God wants you to go up. He wants you to go into his direction. So the Bible says, again, he was going to Tarshish, and he paid the fare, and he went down into it uh, uh, to go with them to Tarshish from, again, the presence of of the Lord. You can't run from the presence of the Lord. But here it is, verse 4. But the Lord sent a great wind. The Lord hurled, one version says, a great wind uh, into the sea. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like to be broken. Now, now watch this now. Now, not only can God send you a message, God can correct your course. Jonah, again, he ran away from the presence of the Lord as he as if he could run away. He ran the other way. He ran in the other direction. Listen, are you running from God tonight? Are you running from the Lord tonight? Are you trying to get away from what God has called you to do? He ran from the call of God, and he got. He was trying to go as far as he could physically away. In other words, he went off course. He went off course, you see, but God gave him, again, instructions to go one way, but Jonah programmed his GPS to go in the other total opposite direction. This act of defiance and disobedience caused God to help him out a bit. You know, listen, sometimes God will help you out when you get off course, and really, instead of getting mad at that, you ought to be glad. So the Bible says that he, God, sent a great wind. God sent a wind, and I believe that wind was for direction. You know, sometimes we find ourselves in storms. You know, there are storms, uh, someone says, uh, uh, that we are either in a storm, just left a storm, about to go into a storm. And then, you know, someone also says that there are storms that we cause ourselves, uh, storms that other folk cause, uh, and storms that God allows us uh, to go through even on tonight. But this storm, this wind was from God. God made the storm. God uh, uh, prepared the storm, if you will. He hurled the storm. And I believe this was a storm of direction. God had to direct his course. You see, God had to use uh, the wind to set the course in the right direction. Of course, God is the controller of the wind. He can speak to the wind. Remember, Jesus spoke to the wind on the water, and he said, peace, be still. Uh, here, God speaks. He commands. He directs the wind to help change Jonah's direction. Uh, you see, God can use anything or anyone to get your attention. You know, they tell me, I'm not by a man by the name of Balaam, God used a donkey uh, to get him straight. Uh, God can use clay uh, like he used uh, clay uh, to help Jeremiah took him down to the potter's house and said, look at this clay. I'm the potter. You are the clay. He can even use dry bones. He told Ezekiel, can these dry bones live? God, amen. God can use anyone or anything to get his message uh, to you, you know, uh, like God did with Jonah. Sometimes God will send the wind in your direction to help you get to the right place. Uh, the wind was to keep you from going in the direction that you think you want to go. You see, uh, haven't you experienced a wind in your life? Uh, you know, you want to go one way, but the wind blows you another way. Uh, it might be about a job. It might be concerning a relationship. It might be concerning a marriage. It might be concerning a move. You wonder why you can't go south or east or north or west. Well, maybe God is blowing some wind in your life to get you to go the other direction. We get off course sometimes, and we need help in our direction, but God still uh, was was with Jonah. Jonah was trying to run, but God still wanted Jonah to go in the right direction. Uh, and so he also sent a storm, uh, the wind and the storm, or this part was for his uh, correction. The tempest uh, was for his correction, you know, and sometimes God will use the force of the wind. Uh -huh. The force of the wind caused a mighty tempest or a great storm. 
he caused the storm, the wind of direction, and now it's a great storm. And again, sometimes we get ourselves into storms when we don't obey the word of God. But God was still with Jonah. This was, hear me well, this was not a storm of destruction. Again, I believe this was a storm of direction and a storm of correction, but it was not a storm of destruction. How do I know that? Well, look back at verse number four. The Bible says, but the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea. Watch this now, so that the ship was like to be broken. Oh, don't miss that. The ship was like to be broken. The ship was about to be broken. The ship was almost about to be broken. It's as if the writer Jonah is personifying the ship. The ship was about to act like and sounded like it was about to break, but God was still holding it together. Come on now. I know sometimes it looks like things are about to break. God might have you in that spot. Sometimes I know it looks like things are about to be over and that there's no way uh, to go. That could be God's correction. God was not going to destroy the boat, but the boat was like unto be broken or was like to be uh, broken. But God was holding it together because God still had a message for those people, and God was trying to correct the direction and correct uh, Jonah's mind and understanding. And so God had to correct Jonah's action and still help him understand that when God calls, you show enough better answer. And if you don't go, uh, and if and if you don't go, uh, God may very well send a storm of correction. The Bible says that whom God loveth, He chasten it. And so God sometimes will will uh, uh, chastise us. He doesn't want to destroy us, but He wants us to understand that He means business. And we get scared and frightened sometimes because we think it's the end. No, this was not a storm of destruction. It was a storm of correction and direction. God didn't want to destroy him. He just wanted to correct him. God loves us, but God is serious. Y'all don't hear me tonight. God wanted Jonah and the crew to know that, yes, God is trying to tell them something. The storm was for his correction. And so, again, God used the storm in his life to show him a number of things. Number one was you can't hide from God. And number two, the will of God is going to be accomplished with or without you. It's better to simply accept it like Jonah did. And then, of course, God is indeed a God of another chance. And we know the rest of the story here when uh, Jonah was thrown over into the water by the men, and the Bible says the fish, the whale, uh, the creature uh, swallowed him. Uh, and then after three days, that's the next lesson, but after three days, uh, he spit him up. And he spent some time in that whale's belly. He was, he was, I call that the storm of reflection because he could do nothing but reflect on his life in that storm. And sometimes God may have you in a point where you can't move. You can't go anywhere. You can't uh, be as mobile as you once were. And you have to reflect on where God has you in your life. So listen now, God is the God of another chance. You might be here today or be listening today and feel that there's no hope for your life. You might be listening today and feel like giving up. You might be listening today and feel like you're, you're stuck and you, you've been stuck uh, many, many times before. You might be here today feeling like you don't have it in you to continue. You might be listening today and feel that uh, what's the use? You'll never get it right. Uh, I, I know how you feel. I've been there. I've been down and doubtful. I've been out and tired. I've been anxious and weary at the same time. But thanks be to God, I never gave up. I kept on pushing. Sometimes God's storms had to work on me. Sometimes God sends, sent me a storm of direction, a storm of correction, and a storm of reflection. And so I keep on fighting. And I say, friend, keep on fighting the good fight, no matter how hard you get hit, keep on fighting and don't run from God. I said, don't run from God. God is the God of another chance. But sometimes we find ourselves in storms that we don't have to be in. You need to understand, again, God is the God 
of a second chance. You might be here and giving up on your brothers and sisters. You might be listening and giving up on your son or daughter or family member. You might be listening and giving up on uh, helping people because they always let you down. Well, while we're here, we all let God down. I believe Jonah let God down, but God was determined to help Jonah do the thing that he needed him to do and answer his calling. And so, again, God wants to save somebody uh, today. And just like God sent Jonah with a message of salvation, God sent his son, Jesus. I wish I had the time to teach a lesson on the type, the type, because Jonah was a type uh, of Christ, uh, pointing uh, to Christ. Y'all don't hear me now. Jonah uh, gave his life, amen, or he allowed them to throw him over for his own sin, but Jesus gave his own life for our sins. Y'all don't hear me now. And Jonah's message saved the entire nation, and God's message, the message of Jesus, will save the whole world, for God so loved the world that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And the message came through Christ Jesus. So, my friends, understand what I'm talking about on this on this morning, on this evening, that God is the God of another chance. Some of us are on our second, our third, our tenth chance. And I just say keep on, keep on keeping on, but don't run from your calling, because if you run from your calling, God may send you into a storm, storm of correction, storm of direction, and even a storm of reflection. So don't run from your calling. Listen, my friends, my lesson is done, and I hope and pray that you've gotten the message that God is the God of another chance. And even though we struggle with what God wants us to do sometimes, I would encourage you just to continue on following God. Days might get dark. Days might get lonely. Days might get to, uh, you might be frightened and in the storm, but keep on following God. God knows what the end will be. And so, my friends, I encourage you, if you're not a member of the Churches of Christ, I encourage you to visit the Church of Christ in your community and talk with the elders or talk with the preacher and have them explain to you the process that God wants you to be saved in. And I believe that process begins with hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus lived, died, and was buried and rose again all according to to the scriptures. You've got to believe that. You've got to repent of your sins. You've got to decide, I'm going to turn Luke 13, 3 and 5. I tell you name, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. And then you have to confess Christ, like we've talked before, how that eunuch in Acts chapter 8, he said, I believe Jesus is Christ, the Son of the living God. And then you have to be baptized in water for the remission of sins, for the removal of sins. Why? Because God said so. Why? Because Jesus said so. So I encourage you, my friends, uh, to learn more about that. Visit the Church of Christ in your neighborhood. That's right. I said the Church of Christ, the Church of Christ in your neighborhood. Look us up online if you're in Philadelphia, 7630 30 Woodbine Avenue, or look us up on Google or Facebook and come uh, visit. But wherever you are, find the Church of Christ today and tell the elders or the preacher or the deacons you need to study more and hear the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. But remember, God is a God of another chance. While there is breath in your body, while there's blood in your veins, you can call upon the name of the Lord, and he will tell you, according to the word of God, what you must do in order to be saved. God bless you. May he bless you real good on tonight. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. When God says no, and we won't listen to the end, just remember, don't forget, Father knows, Father knows what's best. I remember, God, I know, know what's best, yeah, 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 my God, he knows, he knows what's best, what's best. Late in the midnight hour, I 
was crying and all alone Waiting for an answer on my whole gone I even called on my best friend And she could not be found Lord, you said you'll never leave me nor forsake me Lord, where are you now? So I went to church the next Sunday morning Looking for my breakthrough I knew a change would come If I just hold on Cause God's word is true But then the preacher said something And it took me by surprise Sometimes God says no But just like Job You gotta trust him, my child When God says no But when the preacher said it I didn't quite understand it He said don't forget Just trust your father Cause he knows what's best When I lay awake In the middle of the night With tears streaming from my eyes I remember Father knows Cause he knows Father knows And I started to feel a little better Cause he started talking about my Jesus And the garden of Gethsemane And how we pray to the Father Let this cup pass from me Then he did just like me, y'all Said he went to his best friend and his friends let him down He said, my God, my God Why have you forsaken me? Where are you now? You see, sometimes God is moving And we don't understand See, Jesus paid the cost When we were lost And it was all a part of God's master plan so when you're waiting for that answer And God says no to you Just go ahead and shout hey, And have no doubt I trust your That the Father knows more hey, than you When God says no No, 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 no See, it's not in man that walketh To direct his So when I prayed for that job, and I never get the call, and you, you prayed for that sick loved one, and they've gone on to that eternal home, and when you cried, and you prayed, and you cried, and you feel there's nothing left, just put it in the hands of the Father, and remember, no matter what what it looks like, God he knows, God, yes he knows, what's You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. The Community Corner. Ladies and gentlemen, this Community Corner segment is designed to just simply tell our listeners what products and services are being offered in their communities and how you can contact the various vendors for their service. Ladies and gentlemen, you'd be surprised to know just what products and services people have that are, offered, that are being offered that are sitting right there among us in our congregation. This is one of my favorite segments because we get a chance to hear just what are some of the things that people are doing around us to serve. In our community, we have had people on this show who are involved in financial services, legal services. We've had authors. Uh, we've had college consultants, professional boxers who are community activists. We've had NFL players, uh, casting producers for television shows. We've had farmers, comedians, uh, health and wellness models. You name it, we've had them on this broadcast. So we just, and we've also had recently, we had a candidate for the presidency of the United States here in 2024. So the list just goes on 
and on. So we just want to let the Saints be aware of what services are being available in their community. Now, my special guest in the community corner is Kevin Boyd. He's from High Point, North Carolina. Kevin, welcome to the community corner. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine. Huh? (laughs) Thank you for having me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, why don't you introduce yourself to our listeners and tell us what it is that you're doing to serve in our community? Yes, my name is Calvin Boyd. Uh, I'm originally from the state of New Jersey, North Irvington area. I uh, moved here to North Carolina um, back in 2002, and uh, I, I attended the prestigious University of North Carolina, NT State University, uh, where I studied criminal justice. And after college, uh, I started doing comedy. Um, I was a comedian for years and uh, went up and down the East Coast and had a good time. And now I'm doing comedy production where I'm putting on comedy shows for the Triad, which is uh, Greensboro, High Point area, Jamestown. Uh, the event center is in Jamestown. It's called Main Event Center. Mm-hmm. And we do monthly comedy shows. Um, I'm calling myself Mr. Second Saturdays because we do comedy shows on the second Saturday of each month. And um, we usually have the, a lot of people from the community come out. Uh, we have um, sponsors from attorneys to people running for election offices uh, that uh, that come sponsor the comedy shows to get their word out to the community. Uh, judges so that that's ran for election. This also went through the show. Uh, we have everybody, a mix from police officers to attorneys to judges to everybody come together at the comedy show. We just have a good time. Sounds good. Now, I went to the, uh, North Carolina A&T. That's my alma mater. Thank you, Pry, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, on Friday night, now, I do feature comedians on my Friday night show. That's what I hear. I don't do comedy anymore. I don't do stand-up. I mostly just do productions now, putting okay. on different events, mostly comedy. Uh I don't want to do the terror of writing jokes and making people laugh anymore. I'd rather just watch the event growth from like a baby and watch mm-hmm. it happen. Now, have you had an opportunity to do any comedy inside of churches? Yes. that's I'm a, I was a Christian comedian for all my okay. time. I did clean comedy. So I did, I did a lot of church. I actually opened up for Fred Hammond for Okay. Yeah, that sounds good, man. So when is your next uh, comedy show? The next event is going to be the 12th. We just had an event this past Saturday, or the uh, second Saturday, just past Saturday. So the next one is going to be November the 12th. Now, what I would like to do, I'd like to collaborate with you now, because the year 2022, I've been on the air since 2016, but and I've been featuring comedians since 2016. But I never talked to them. I never interviewed them on my radio show. I just featured them. They did their sets. But I never actually talked to them like I do the artists that I play on my radio shows. So this year was the first time I've actually started interviewing or talking to the art of the comedians on my radio show. So I would love to, if, I, if you could, uh, we could set up a pipeline or something for these comedians and they, so they could come on my Friday night show and do sets on the air. That sounds wonderful. I got a whole list of awesome comedians that would be awesome for the show. Oh, okay. So that sounds good. I'd definitely be talking to you about that. Hey, so is there anything else we need to know what you're doing before I let you go? Oh, uh, uh, just basically, I'm just trying to do events uh, for you know the, the the working class person and uh, you know the person that just say, hey, there's nowhere to go safe or to have fun for my age or, mm-hmm. you know, I want something for everybody to do, something, you know, safe and that they can come out and have a good time, get some food. Uh, we have vendors to shop with. And um, it's just a good whole environment. It's a safe area, safe parking. And we just want to, I just want to continue to expand and get people out, come have a good time and laugh and know that they can get out and, and just have a good time and don't have to worry about nothing. Now, I did have a question I did want to ask you now. Since you were a stand-up comedian yourself, 
What um, yes. advice would you give to a young person who's looking to get into stand-up comedy? You got to, for a young person trying to get up at stand-up comedy, you got to take it serious. You got to, you got to practice your craft. You got to try your best to write jokes when you're not in writer's block and write this stuff down and stay consistent, hit any open mic up. The problem with what I'm seeing now is I'm a promoter. I've been promoting. I've been doing comedy shows for over five years. I did a monthly show for every month uh, for like three years. Every month of the of the calendar, I did a show. My mom passed away in 2014. I did a comedy show the next day. I'm sorry for your loss. Um, thank you, sir. I was just we wanted to use that as a consistency level of how much that we stuck with, you know. But you have to be consistent. You have to do open mics, and you have to be willing to do open mics. These new comedians don't want to put the work in. They think that as soon as I come up a comedian, I need to be paid. I need to be booked. I need to be – you have to put the leg – anything you do, you have to put the leg work in. You have to put your time and your dues in. So I would tell them to put their dues in, get on any show they can get a part of, and try their best to – master their craft, ask questions to veterans, ask questions, ask what to do. You need to learn the game, the, the ins and outs of the game. Okay. Well, if, if our listeners want to get in touch with you to get involved in this comedy or just to come support your shows, how can they get in contact with you? I'm always looking for awesome, new, fresh comedians. So if you please contact me. I'm on Facebook at Calvin Boyd. I'm on Instagram at CRB Promotions, and that's the two. And I'm also on Snapchat at CRB The Comedian. Hey, Calvin, thank so, you so much, brother, for joining us on the Community Corner. Certainly appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And I definitely will be getting with you to, to get the contact with some of those other comedians that you do have, because I do want to uh, interview those comedians and have them on the show on Friday night. Yeah, I got a good one for you. His name is Already Jonathan Already Walker. I'm gonna send him to you. He's the next. He's the next big comedian to go. Now, where is he from? He's from Fayetteville, North Carolina. No, he's right he's in my backyard. Yeah, he's. I'm surprised you ain't even heard of him. He's the. He's the hottest thing in North Carolina. I'm gonna say, and I, I do. A, I deal with a lot of comedians. Okay. And um, he has the next potential to go. So I would love for she interviewed him. Yeah, we'll I'll definitely try to get him on the show then. Hey, brother, thank you so much for joining us on the Community Corner. Certainly appreciate it. Thank you. God bless. God bless. The Community Corner. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show.
from the Lord Radio Show. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for spending a little time with us this evening in a study of God's Word. I want to thank both of my speakers on the show tonight. What a great lessons that we heard on from both of our speakers tonight, Brother David Tillman from the Cottage Grove Church of Christ there in Rockford, Alabama. He gave us a subject, Lord, help me with me. I just love that title of his lesson because that was some great lessons, some great points that he gave in that lesson. And also my co-host Lou Gilbert, he always does a great job on this broadcast, this subject, the God of another chance. And ladies and gentlemen, we're just trying to encourage you. We're just trying to edify you. We don't want you to give up. We don't want you to give up this fight because heaven is our goal. We're trying to get as many people to heaven as we can, because that's what the Lord would have us to do, that God would have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. That's God's will. So that's what we're trying to do on this radio show. We're trying to do God's will. We're trying to help people make it to heaven. Heaven is our goal, like Johnny Wilder says in his song. Heaven is our goal. That's what we're trying to do. So I just want to thank both of my speakers on the show tonight, and also my special guest, Kevin Boyd. He uh, He's a promoter now for com- comedians, and we're trying to get some of those comedians on this broadcast because I feature comedians on my Friday night show on The Blast, and we've been doing that since 2016. But this year in 2020, 2022 rather, 
we're starting to interview those comedians. So that's what I was talking to him about in the community corner. So we certainly appreciate him coming on the show as well. I just want to thank everybody who participated in the show tonight. It's just uh, my prayer that the lessons, the things that were heard on this show have been beneficial to your spiritual lives and your relationship with the Lord has been strengthened because you're not only tuning in this radio broadcast, but you're giving yourself over to a study of God's word. So until we meet again, I pray God's continual blessings upon your lives and that he bless you real, real good. You've been listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. On behalf of my co-hosts, Isa Mullins, Shauna Otis, and Lou Gilbert, and Kelly Fletcher, we really do appreciate your love and support for these programs. I'm your host, Stevie R. Butler. Good night, everybody. God bless you. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. from the Lord Radio Show.
from the Lord Radio Show.